The Stanley Hotel. The Stanley Hotel. Yep. I have a little ghost that says it. Is that where like he wrote like all like the Marvel movies and stuff? Stan Lee. God, <laughs> I get it. A shit. I get it. <laughs> no, that was a good delivery. <clears throat> but no, Stephen King stayed there, and that inspired The Shining. Was he? A, was he a Dumb and Dumber fan? No, that would have come out way after. But like the cool thing is that the staircase scene where he's like, "I'll race you up the stairs." Like that was a cool. When I found out that's where that was filmed, that was pretty cool. That yeah, I guess they're in a really fancy hotel. Yeah, and that is crazy, dude. And then the series was filmed there so not the stanley kubrick movie yeah because that's in a different hotel yeah which i've been to that hotel really i haven't been inside of it that's in colorado that one's also in colorado yeah weird i'm pretty sure because i'm pretty sure because i remember like going to the outside of it and you could stay in it and like um it's like really expensive to stay there is that when you went to estes park you sure it wasn't the series one you're thinking about i'm pretty sure it was the movie one because i didn't even know they had a series yeah but like a lot of people think the movie one is filmed there too because that's the one that inspired the book. I guess I've only seen The Shining once. It's really good. And I've only the seen series the, isn't great. And I've only seen The Hotel once. Was it Nestus Park? Maybe. Because that would have been the one that inspired the book and the one that was filmed in the It series. was a cool hotel. No, like, yeah, the and it's actually haunted, too. Yeah, I, yeah it's just freaky. Because I no, stayed in a... I paid extra and stayed in a haunted room. It was great, like 400 bucks for one night. Were you by yourself? No, this is. I was on a road trip with the girlfriend at the time, what and that was our hell? first stop. Yeah, it was like four hundred bucks for one night there. Did anything happen? Um, the only thing was, is we stayed in the room right above the most haunted room, and that, did you pick? Or no, was just what was available. No, I just we paid extra for a haunted hotel room, and so there's the most haunted room, which I can't remember the number, but we were. 100 above it so we were the room above it and so like the only thing that happens we had a creaky bathroom door that like kept opening maybe yeah, that could just be a bad hand yeah and then also the ghost we slept above hates unmarried couples and we were unmarried and we woke up on very opposite sides of the bed so that's it oh was the bed comfy like was it like a deep was it like it wasn't a great room because also we had a very slanted um, ceiling and it was over my side of the bed so I anytime I got up I just like banged my head against the ceiling I remember so you got to pay a lot of money to hopefully experience something and not even stay in a good room but the money also got me an EMF reader and that little ghost I wrote I read the Stanley name off of and a mug shit she didn't keep anything from that hotel she wanted the... to forget the entire experience. apparently no like yeah she I... you left with collectibles and tangible things she left with a ghost, probably. Yeah, no, because we've broken up since, and I've kept everything we got from that hotel. Yeah, she's probably possessed right now, dude. Think about that. <laughs> Think you about ruined it. her life because <laughs> you took her to the Stanley Hotel. It's a really cool hotel because also you can just do like the tour where it's like a haunted ghost tour, and you take photos, and oh, I brought my man. EMF reader. That's uh, It's cool, but I don't know if I can handle that. It wasn't scary at all. Um, When my parents went, though, they really interacted with some spirits because there's a thing also where... During one part, apparently there's like kid ghosts, which whatever the fuck that means. That but means um, they're, that means you're, they're younger. Yeah, but like I don't think a bunch of kids died there. Maybe. I, they give you the history. I don't think a bunch of kids died there. But um, you're given like dumb dumb suckers and you stand, you set them straight up in your hand. And if you talk to it, kids ghosts will like play with it. So you can see it like kind of like spin or tip over. What? And my dad got it to like really move around. I'll ask them for the video and we can post about That's it. Yeah, fucking freaky. Yeah, because that wasn't part of my tour, but that was part of theirs when they went there. Oh and, my God. And he got like a really good video. Of did the, he get to keep the sucker? I mean, it's like a little dum-dum, so it's like 99 cents. Yeah, but did he? Yeah. Do you think he ate it or do you think you keep that? I don't know. Because that'd be very curious. Because like, that'd be a bummer to take that away from the ghost kids, but also it's kind of sad, the idea that they're just pawing out a and they can't dum-dum have, sucker and from they the can't afterlife. Even get it. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I'll leave it on the floor for in like good spirits. <laughs> but like but it's, like it's just a forever like tempt yeah for them. so you might as well just take it away from them so then they can forget and then you can keep the experience until the next tour comes around and, and just taunts them yeah, and then you just taunt them again but it's like man if you if a ghost was messing around with a dumb dumb sucker would you eat it that's the question <sighs> no I guess it depends on i what... wouldn't because that's like my memory of that i wouldn't because after you eat it you're not going to keep the sticks so you're going to throw it away but i would keep an entire dum dum sucker as you'd have to like, like a memento. It, you have to like keep it separate and like put it like in a weird place so you know that that one is like a yeah. Ghost like put one. it on a bookshelf. Like that yeah, is the one the ghost, ghost played one. with. Yeah, which I, I don't think, think it, they did. And I think it would also depend on what flavor. Like if it's a good flavor, you know, I might. What's the best flavor of dum dums? Blue raspberry. Yeah, 
And if you're thinking out there that it's mystery, no, you're wrong. Go fuck yourself. I think mystery is... You pretentious piece of shit. I think mystery is just like uh, vanilla or like... Probably, It's yeah. just like it's a... It's that gross, milky, clear. Yeah, and it's like... Like, no, if I get a dum-dum sucker, I only want cherry or... Gro- or not grape, um, cherry or blue raspberry. Isn't there a root beer one? That one's pretty good, I think. I don't like root beer. Oh, and yeah. I hate things grape flavored, but I like the flavor of a real grape. Oh, you don't like? I love grape flavored. Like, I hate grape what, flavored. And I hate banana flavored. You don't like grape Jolly Ranchers? Nope. Well, they're so good. I don't like grape or strawberry either. Ooh, strawberry. I don't think it. Also, I don't really like strawberries that much. Well, okay. When we're get like artificial fruit, like yeah, how artificial... is watermelon a flavor? <sighs> because I love, it does not taste like watermelon. I love though. watermelon Jolly Ranchers because watermelon tastes watermelon tastes like. Water. It's sweet though. It's like sweet water, but like when you eat a watermelon Jolly Rancher, it's, it's not, not that flavor. It's not no, that flavor, you're right. but it's delicious. So yeah. <laughs> like that's a, there's there's a couple of different flavors that are like that, like banana. That doesn't taste like a banana. Well, if you eat a grape, it tastes nothing like if you because grape flavor is such a specific thing. Like if you grape, if you drink like grape soda, yeah, like that's such a. I feel like it tastes more like purple than it tastes like grape. <laughs> yeah. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, no. Yeah. yeah. That's because it, it's if you, purple drink, dude. Because if you eat a grape, it doesn't taste like that. That's because it, it's mostly fruits are just sweetened water. A grape is just you know with water. Yeah, it has that sour, but it doesn't like have that grapey taste that grape flavored shit does. I wonder how they like determined. Yeah, and how they made these artificial flavors, and then do you think they were just like messing around and they were like, I mean, this is good. Let's just, just throw the name grape on it. See what maybe, happens. yeah. Because like does, that's weird. Does anything taste like it's fruit? Pineapple stuff usually. Pineapple does because pineapple has that very distinct, very tart. Because I feel like banana sometimes does. But banana is a weird taste, and like it's a weird flavor it, well, in the, the fruit it, too. The banana is like a lot of things with the banana flavor also goes with the texture of the banana. Yeah, and, and when you're eating that. banana flavored things, they're usually hard. So then it's also yeah weird. But I will say, like when we're talking about artificial, like. Fruits and stuff, it makes me think of like jo- jo- or, uh, jelly beans. And I will say, they only come around Easter time. But the Starburst and Jolly Rancher jelly beans, holy shit. So I was never a fan of that. You didn't like those jelly beans? They're so good. So like, I don't love candy. I like chocolate. Oh, you're not a, you're not a, I see, I love like sweets. Like I, I love fruit flavored sweets like Mike and Ike's, those I, Jolly Ranchers. Mike and Ike's are like my, one of my favorite. Candies. I like Mike and Ike's and I like Jolly Ranchers, but like I would rather have chocolate. Like a, you'd rather have a Hershey's bar? Absolutely. Really? Yep. I mean, I'm, I got to be in a specific mood for chocolate. I mean, I love chocolate. See, but like, I, I'm reverse. I love chocolate at all times. Oh, and then you got to be in a specific mood for like, like fruit candy. Flavored. Yeah. Weird. That is weird. Yeah. Because like. I, I don't like Starburst ever. What? Starbursts are delicious. They're just not quite it. Like, I like Jolly Ranchers. I like that type of candy. Dude, when I was younger, my neighbor had a poker table in her basement. Yeah. We used to play poker because we would hang out in her basement. Cool. And we were kids, so we didn't have, like, money. Was it, like, your hot neighbor? Yeah. Okay. The one that lived yep. right up the street. I yeah. know who that is, yeah. Um, um, but we would play poker in her basement, and we would use Starbursts as, that, like, the chips. That's a good chip. Because it's different flavors. And, then, and they're stackable. Yeah, and then, like, the winner would get all the Starbursts, and I would never win, but then we would just end up sharing and eating them. Do you, you like know? poker? I like I like gambling. I like, like playing poker. Texas Hold'em is probably my favorite uh, kind of gambling. Yeah, I like that. But I've never actually done that. You never professionally, not professionally, but, like, actually gambled money? No, like, I've, I've played a couple things, like, with friends or, like, family. Well, like, like you family. used to live next to the biggest... Yeah, I never. I think you never I, went. I think I went once and to, uh, and you know. just wandered wandered around. Because I've only gone once, and it was oh, because I was helping you move out. Because, but the way I did it was like I have twenty dollars. I want to lose it and just see what this is like. Yeah. And at most, I think I had twenty eight dollars, and like I literally just I was like, I want to see how long it takes me to lose to all lose of it. all the money. Because I was like, this is what. The experiences. I'm, well, I'm just, I want to try different games, but like I only tried slot machines and that was boring because. Yeah, because you just. Because I feel like, I feel like I'm somebody who could have a gambling addiction. Yeah, but then I'm also like, I don't want to, if I had, if I, if I got on the wild ride of winning, then definitely yes. I feel but like, like I'm, I'm, I don't, I, I'm like so like scared to like waste money See, in I, that aspect. I think I'm somebody who could really talk themselves into, well, if you keep playing, you can win it back. <laughs> yeah. But like, and not if out I of just take out a, If I just take out another $100, then I will make my $1,000 back. 
I mean, some people can. Yeah, some people Why can't can. I? <laughs> I mean, if you play for long enough, you the odds will be in your favor. I don't know. <laughs> or I, or you just got to be good. Yeah, because I feel like the way to do it is be like, this is what I'm willing to lose. Give yourself a specific number. So, like, if we went to a shitty Iowa casino, it'd be 50 bucks max. Because, oh, yeah, that's not bad. And, like, if I went to Vegas, it'd probably be, like, 200 bucks. Well, I'm willing to lose this for the fun and games So, I've only been to the, the, the one in our town. We should go sometime. Yeah, that'd be really fun, but I've only been there twice. I've only one been time, there once. One time I went for a concert. Right. Which is weird, because we did wander around the casino, and I did a couple slot machines. They make it kind of hard to gamble, because you can't just, like, have a dollar No, you gotta, anymore. like, get it into chips. and. No, you have to, for me, I had to put it on a card, I think. Oh, And weird. then, like, I gave you receipts for how much you made. And then you have to go return the receipt in to get the money. Yeah, that's why I was like, I just want to lose all of it. Yeah, it's it, it's very weird. It's less fun, because, like, you can't just, like, go with, like, a bucket of coins anymore. Which, which would be super cool, but I get it, germs. And there's a coin shortage. True. Which, or I don't know if that was Which really Which I don't give yeah. a shit about, yeah, but who yeah. Cares? Uh, <laughs> I got plenty of coins. Do you want them? Pay me for them. <laughs> who am I talking to? I don't know. But I got them. Yeah. Fuck uh, you, Elysia. Yeah. <laughs> Pay me. She wants the coins. Because we're not it. paying her. No. <laughs> These coins are mine, bitch. <laughs> There's nobody there, so don't worry. I didn't call her a bitch because she's not real. Yeah, we're not sexist. We just hate imaginary people. Yeah, we just hate imaginary. <laughs> <laughs> we're anti-imaginary friend for sure. Oh, <laughs> uh, dude, but I I've never sat at a table. I always think it'd be fun to sit at a table. Because my thing is, I went there and I was like, "Ooh, roulette would be fun." Because I like the idea of like putting it all on red. Oh, but, and then the the spinning wheel that would be fun. But their roulette was digital, and I don't fucking trust that. No, I want to see the wheel. No. Yeah. Yeah, that's that really that really bummed when me I, out. When I wandered around when I was there, like the I first bet there's time, a real one somewhere. There's so many different digital things. Mm-hmm. Like there's like themed like Walking Dead and all this stuff, and it's like, yeah. Do you want to play the Munster slot machine or the Sex in the City slot machine? And it's just like obviously uh, Munsters, I, 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 it's all digital, so it's like you don't even pull a thing anymore. You just put, click a, a button. Click a button. It's a bummer. And, and it's just like, man, that could be totally rigged. And it probably is rigged. It is rigged, yeah. So it's like, I would much rather be at a table playing cards. Yeah, for which sure. Which I know is like... Also rigged. Also but rigged, have, but it's like physical, tangible. I can, and, yeah, I can touch it. And you can be like, oh, damn, blackjack. I think it'd be fun to play blackjack just because it's like a fast game. Is that the like 21? It's 21, yeah. Yeah. Which is I, a great movie. Sure. Have you ever seen it? No. You never seen Twenty One? I don't like. I don't like movies that touch upon things that are by chance. Do you know what Twenty One's about? Yeah, it's about ca- card counting and stuff. But the idea that they like that in the script it said then this man sl- flipped over this number and it meant this that annoys because like I don't give a shit. You wrote all of that in, so the chance is all gone. Which I guess the chance is gone in all films. But well, I yeah, just, it's a film. Yeah, I. It's the same. So with, you don't like Casino Royale, the James Bond movie? That's I like that because of the Bond shit. The fact that he got his nut slapped by whatever the oh fuck that God, guy was that, swinging. That's yeah. one of the most brutal scenes I've no, ever seen. It's the seen. same movie. I hate. Same reason I hate movies about like magicians. Like I think we talked about this. Like the idea of now you can see now you see me. Like that okay, people so, yeah, have their get, mind blown by that twist, but I'm like, none of it's real. Yeah, none of it's real. It's and not magic. Like a lot of like the car tricks and stuff. Obviously, they might have done like a lot of fan, but then there's one scene at the end where they jump off the building and turn into birds. Yeah, which like, is like, I do say I really like that movie just okay. because I'm a fan of magic. But like, okay, so you don't <laughs> like any magic movies? Do you like the Prestige? Yes, I love the Prestige. That's a great movie. That's the perfect movie. Dude, that movie's in. If I could forget any movie incredible. and rewatch a movie, it'd be that movie. But like, but wait, 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 that's wait, all wait, fake. Wait, wait, yeah, I know it's all fake. But David it Bowie's so in it. Great writing. But now that we're talking about now, you now you see me. Can we talk about the fact? <laughs> yeah, get serious. No, can we talk about the fact that the first movie is called Now You See Me, and the second movie is Now You See Me Too? That film, the fucking title has a second sequence, and it's Now You See Me. No, you can't. Like that's what, <laughs> or like the term. What are you trying to no, say? No, like right the now? term. Now you see me. Now you don't. Oh, it yeah. has a sequel to. And they just named it. Now you see me too. Yeah, that's such fucking bullshit. <laughs> that is. This the... is a movie that came out like ten years yeah, ago. Yeah, no, it's now you see me. Now you don't. Dude, that would have been so cool. But then if you would no, confused... they called it now. No, people wouldn't be confused because that's what the name should have been. It should have been now you don't. Not now you see me too. 
Okay, so you think the second one should have been Now You See Me, Now You Don't? No, it should have been called Now You Don't. That's a that's a confusing title if you don't know what it is. Now You See Me is a confusing title. Well, I can see it. And Now You Don't. Now, okay. I guess I kind of know what you mean. Yeah. Um, I don't remember... Go fuck yourself, whoever <laughs> produced... Or... Yeah, go fuck yourself, Jesse Eisenberg. Well, He's I mean... the main guy in it. No, I actually like him in that movie. great cast. Yeah, I, yeah. No, but... the cast is incredible. Who's the... Hulk's in it, dude. Yeah. That's great. I don't. I think I've seen the second one maybe once. I've never seen it. I just know um, the name because it gets weird with like the four horsemen. I'm like going off memory. I haven't seen this movie. Of like Armageddon. No, like that's what they are. They're the four horsemen. That's they're magicians, and that's why they come together. Okay. And then because they, they all have like their own characteristics of like the sure. four horsemen, dude. Yeah. I loved the first one. I know you did. Um, and then like the Hulk guy, um, is in it, and he's like the detective. It's trying to like catch them because they're doing crimes, but then they're giving it back to the people. Like the the bank robbery scene, super cool. Sure, it was a fine movie, but like the idea that they're doing magic is both like. Yeah, I get what you're saying, but you, <laughs> you, it's like watching any super film. They're obviously on wires in a green screen. Yeah, but like at everything's least fake, dude. <laughs> I guess, but it was like We're the, filming this episode months in advance. You think it's live? <laughs> It's fake. We should do a live episode. <laughs> It'd be fucking terrible. We need to like pick events to do like live recordings. Not live, live, but as in recording Film it real quick to for, the release. like for specific Mondays. What like a good holiday Monday? We should do a record like Fourth of July. MLK Day. That's usually on a Monday. Talk about our MLK stories. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of them. <laughs> Go fuck. <laughs> Are you saying no, that to MLK? No, you. I'm saying it to you. And also whoever <laughs> titled it, Now You See Me Too. I'm yeah, but I bet I guarantee Now You See Me Too has so many sales. Oh, yeah, because it's a bullshit movie. <laughs> no, I'm tra- Now I, we're really getting down to the nit and I've been trying to think of movies that have an obvious like second title, and I literally can't. I will say... Um, it should have been Now You Don't. Fast and the Furious did it great. Because mm-hmm. Fast and the Furious, Too Fast, Too Furious. That's great. That was great. But now it's at F8. Yeah, isn't... F10. Isn't one of the movies they just They drop like, the Furious. It's just Fast Five. That's the fifth one, Fast I Five. I one was like Furious 7 or something. I think they do like... Oh my God. So oh it's just, shit. I, would I love hate to, that. I would love to look up look up the technical titles for each movie. Fuck, I'm going to grab my phone I real quick. I fucking hate... Know. While, while he's doing that, I'm just going to say right now, dude. I liked the Fast and the Furious when they came out, but now I can't stand them. There's too many of them. We get it. You're the rock. I literally think they get lazy though at the end because it doesn't matter. F eight because it's just cars, family, Coronas, and uh, cool stunts. Like that's what. It, isn't that like the big thing in like the recent film? It's just like family. Well, I'm drinking a Corona. So I've never actually seen one. Any, you haven't seen any no. of the early ones. I've seen a piece of the first movie, and I just remember Tokyo Drift was cool. What is that? The third one? That's uh, I don't know. Because I remember liking them when I was younger and when they first came out, but like they're annoying me like the Marvel films because there's so many of them all the time. This list I'm getting is weird. It's not like in chronological order. It it just listed some ones that weren't movies. Whoa, is there like spinoffs or something? I know there is kind of spinoffs. Um, yeah, isn't there like? Okay, I think. I, all right, I have it here. So the first one is The Fast and the Furious. Yeah, which is cool. Second one is Too Fast, Too Furious. Great sequel. I mean, it's so stupid that it's awesome. Yeah, Too but, Fast, Too Furious. But, which is weird because the series hasn't gotten stupid yet at that point. No, the series is still pretty good. Because the first one was in 2001. Yeah. Second been, one's 2003. They've been doing it for 20 years. Wait, third one's 2009, and it's called Fast and Furious. Well, they dropped the the. They pulled, Ford, a, face, they pulled a Facebook and they just dropped the the. <laughs> nice. Damn, that, that long for the third one. Wait. But now it's saying the fourth one's called Fast Five. So we're missing one. <laughs> what? What the fuck is this list? Well, I know, dude. I know that the story does not 
go oh, in include o- Tokyo Drift, right? There's, it does not go in order of the way they were released, right? Because Tokyo, Tokyo Drift, Drift like happens before the second one. I'm pretty sure, or something like that. So that may be why the no- yeah. But Tokyo Drift takes place way later on, I think. Yeah, it's it's confusing. I don't know that much about the series. Yeah, but, so I, but I do know it's like out of order. It's so like I'm, Star Wars. I'm guessing that's why. So number f- four is Fast Five. So I'm guessing Tokyo Drift they're excluding from this list. So did they... Okay, so Fast Five was really the fifth one that came out. Fast Five, yeah. Yeah. And then number five on this is Fast and Furious 6. So they went off of the number three line, but added a six at the end. Fast... Okay, so they dropped the the... So... Fast and Furious 6. Yes. Why would they go Fast Five and then Fast and Furious 6? Oh, and here number six is the Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift. Yeah, there's Tokyo Drift. So that's where it took Tokyo place. Drift was six? Chronological. Okay, because I'm pretty sure Tokyo Drift was like... Second or third. It would have been in the top five because Fast Five, you know, yeah. would have been five. Yeah, this is a chronological order. So we're going the Fast and I the hope Fury. there's a huge Fast and Furious fan listening that we're just pissing off. So, all right, chronological order. To the Fast and Furious, number one. Too Fast, Too Furious. Fast and Furious, which is number three. Fast Five, <laughs> number five. So, fuck me, I guess. Okay, Fast and Furious 6. The Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift, Furious 7. You were right, dude. Furious 7. That's so stupid. Ah, uh, yeah, that's dumb. No, this is them being like, I don't know, fucking watch it. That's what they're saying well, to that, their dude, crowd. At this yeah. point, you're making seven fucking films. They don't care anymore. The Fate and the... Or, all right, yeah, the next one is The Fate and the Furious. The Fate and the Furious? What the fuck does that, that mean? That makes... Oh, now they're just playing a words on the... That's so stupid. What? What does oh, the oh, fate mean? Oh, 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 when you get to work on Monday, did you go? Did you go see the fate and the furious? Well, because the crazy. That's so stupid. Well, because the crazy thing is, they're still fast. They aren't necessarily furious. Some of the scenes are furious. But no, I'm saying they replaced the word fast with fate. Yeah. So the fate. So there's no fast anymore. But they're but, still driving fast cars. Yeah. No. The 100 percent guaranteed is that they're fast, is, not that they're furious. Did they name that one? Is that the one where the guy died? I have. Is that why they put fate in it? Is that what is that? Because I remember one of the one of the main actors died. I don't know which one. Yeah, the the car crash. You know. Yeah. No, I don't know which one he died in. And like he died. Yeah, he died mid film, but that was like a big deal. You know. Because they yeah they filmed the last bit with his brother with his face on him. Oh really? That's how they finished it. Yeah. Okay. You know a lot about Disney University. I know. All right. So there's (laughs) the Fate and the Furious. He's plugged in. So that's supposedly number eight. Number nine is Fast and Furious presents. Hobbs and Shaw. Yeah, the spinoff. Yeah, because that's the one where um, Idris Elba is the villain, which that one looked really good to me. And then The Rock and... It's The Rock and... Um, fuck. The What's o- his name? The other guy, the British guy. Yeah, the guy from um, where he like... Char- um, the transporter guy. I don't know his name. Fuck. You you have the movies in front of you. Just click on it. Uh, no, I have to look it up separately. Why can't so you I don't just get click off the on list. it? Oh. Yeah, but I, uh, what's crazy is... I. I haven't seen them, but I'm pretty Jason sure... Jason Statham. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, like, in the early movies, The Rock and Jason Statham were enemies. Yeah, because The Rock's a cop, right? But also, isn't the one guy who died is a cop, but he's undercover? He was undercover. But then he becomes best friends with everybody? Yeah, because of family and Corona, and we're driving right. fast okay. cars, okay? so, okay. yeah. Fast and Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw, which is The Rock and... Jason Statham. Jason Statham. Because they team up to against take down Idris Elba. Which who, is bad. I love Idris Elba, dude. Well, yeah, no. He's I, so good. If I would watch one of these movies, it'd be that one for sure. Let's start a side podcast where we just watch all the Fast and Furious. <laughs> no, seriously, can't we? <laughs> too moist, too Monday. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are 100% doing that. We're we'll, re- we'll do that for one of these main. Because we, we're not big enough no, to do No, we're going to release 11 episodes. Well, yeah, it would just be a mini side, a yeah. mini series, but it would be under too moist, moist Monday. Too Monday. <laughs> oh my God. And we'll talk about all the movies, dude. That actually be really fun. Yeah, we'll go. We'll, we'll write notes about it and discuss. No, because we've never. I mean, you've only seen one of them. I've seen literally. I've seen. No. I think. I've, I think I saw Fast Five a couple times. I think I saw Fast Five in theaters. Really? Dude, I was way into like the first couple when I was younger. All right, they not- came out in two thousand one. I was like ten. That's cool as fuck. Fast cars. I'd be six. Yeah, I was you wrong. You weren't 10. I was no, less were, than 10, but still, seven, I remember yeah. watching it at my grandparents' house. No, when it came we're going to cool. do this. We're going to do two yeah, moist, that's gonna two be, Monday. That's going to be be- we'll, <laughs> two moist, we'll, we'll, two Monday. We'll release two episodes per to do this. Yeah, so we'll have the main line and maybe we release and, it uh, on two wet moist, Wednesday. Two Monday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no. Oh, two moist, two Monday, Tuesday. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah, we got it, dude. We got okay, it. So two moist, two Monday. Coming up in the future, <laughs> two moist, two Monday. Robert and Jacob review. Go through the whole franchise. It's going to be 11 fucking episodes. I'm so excited about that. 
<laughs> no so, one's gonna keep a fuck. No, but it will be you and me watching it, taking notes separately. Yeah, we're we gonna we'll watch it separately. And then we're we gonna we come to, in. We'll, then we'll sit down and talk. It's gonna be fun to to see the to <laughs> see the evolution of Vin Diesel. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's oh, let's keep going. Wait, we'll have to no. So for that, will be the moist and the Monday. Oh yeah, entitle them off the too moist, too Monday, moist and Monday, moist five. No, it'll be fast Monday, <laughs> moist and Monday, the moist and the Monday Tokyo trip. <laughs> Monday seven. No, wait, it'll be. Oh wait, so it'll be Monday five and then moist seven. Moist seven. <laughs> Oh shit! We have to figure out what the version of the fate is for moist. Okay, so it's it's just a it's it's just another M O word. But the the moat in the Monday, <laughs> the moat of the Monday, the moat of the Monday. We're we're giving ourselves future ideas. Bro. Moist and Monday presents. Moist and Monday presents. Jacob and, Jacob and Robert. Robert. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So we're what's at next? Fast and Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw, and then it's just F nine. So F nine. They're getting la- lazy. Yeah. So M nine. M nine. That sounds like a Bond thing. M9. Wait, 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 wait. So number what? 11 is what? called Fast and Furious 10. So we're, what? So, so we're the, missing one? No, no, because um, Tokyo Drift is in there. <laughs> so it throws everything off. Yeah. So it goes F9, F10, but there's 11 films? F9, Fast and Furious 10. Dude, that's, why are they going, There's why do they switch it up all the time? Just pick one and keep it. It should have just been Fast, the Fast and Furious every, the number. They shouldn't have. Well, I like that Fast Five. You're just simplifying it. It should be then Fast Six. Or when they go F six is Seven. Fast and Furious Nine. No, when, it's F Nine. When they went F Yeah. Seven is Furious Seven. If you're gonna, if you're gonna. So they've sh- done Fast Five and Furious Seven. If you're gonna cut it down to just F Nine, keep it that way for the rest of them. Right, F Ten, yeah. F Eleven. No, nope, Fast and Furious Ten. That's so stupid. I'm yeah. guessing it's a different team. Doing it every film. I bet it's different writers. Yeah, different team, different writers, but it's the same actors and the same, for the most part. I'm guessing there's people that don't return. I mean, but I guess they, they die, they yeah. make a ton of money. I mean, yeah. It's just an great. action fucking... I remember, dude, F5, I, re- I remember really liking it. I watched them one a lot. I'm really excited to do there's a, a watch scene, through with you and me. <laughs> dude, there's a scene in F5, I'm pretty sure, where they rip a bank vault straight from straight from the <laughs> bank and they're dragging it through the interstate with their cars like a, on chains it's so, <laughs> Dude, it's so stupid but i it's and then there's like they do this weird thing where they because they're getting chased by cops yeah they do this weird thing where they like confuse them and then they have a fake ch- fake vault that they're pulling That's also being dragged yeah so then they can <laughs> so then they can dodge <laughs> yeah and, and, so and then when they and then when they catch him the vault's empty it's the fake one. oh shit <laughs> you, you arrested it. me while i had a fake vault yeah i didn't do anything wrong obviously you can still charge the fucking person because yeah, you're dragging co- you're, you're dragging a vault concrete through the interstate That's so many law lo- and running from the police <laughs> no because i bet they i mean we'll fucking figure out if they like dude are we <laughs> no we're doing this i know but like Based on the fact that we're launching this now, are we going to start doing this with other movies? That'd actually be really fun. If we get into it, yeah, and we can replace Moist and Monday with other things. I think it'd be fun to just dive into series of movies that we probably don't care about and yeah. just talk about them just to see how stupid they are. I mean, we can do Moist of the Mondays and it's just Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> moist of the Mondays. <laughs> moist Monday and the Sorcerer's Stone. <laughs> Fucking stupid. We go through the whole Harry Potter franchise. <laughs> but it's you and me reviewing it. Yeah. Where it's, it's like, the uh, names. they're wizards, bro. I don't care. You're you're a hizzard wary. No, we we're starting. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm actually really pumped to do this. Yeah, with so you. am I. Because so we'll have to record all these as well as Moist Monday episodes. Yeah, luckily we're far enough ahead. I'm going to write this down so yeah. then we can start doing this and backlog it. Yeah. I mean, no. this episode, we're filming this. Yeah, because we'll, we'll have to do this by the time this episode comes out. Yeah, and then this, so then we'll... We'll probably, release this with the with the Moist and the Monday. Oh, that'd be really cool. So this comes out and then the, the next, next day, day Tuesday. The, the next yes. day after you hear this, you're going to hear the Moist, the and, moist the and the Monday. <laughs> where you review the first message for <laughs> Oh, that's that's so good that we record this in advance, so it gives us it gives us time months. to watch 11, yeah. 11 fucking movies of the same, dude. <laughs> it's gonna be every movie is gonna be the same. Yeah, 
it's no. g- and we're gonna review them separately. Do we give them? We'll have to figure out. Like, do we give them ratings, or we just talk about them? Or do well, we- I mean everything. Yeah, but so I'm guessing by the time we get to the eighth one, it's gonna take twenty minutes to review it because there's nothing there. Yeah, we're just like. <laughs> or we'll figure out their cinematic masterpieces because I don't. No, they know. they are what they are, dude. Fast cars, girls in bikinis. Corona. Corona family. family. Yeah. That's, I mean, I don't, was, has that been there the entire time? I, I don't know. know. I, have I just know Vin seen... Diesel's always, he's like the main guy, but he's like, doesn't talk that much. Cause that's kind of Vin Diesel and everything. Have you ever seen the pacifier? Yes. No, great <laughs> yeah, fucking I movie. Love that that's movie. such a good movie. Uh, it's just crazy because like, it's him. It's him. It's, it's Vinny boy. I mean, it's like kind of like the rock dude, tooth fairy. Or, um, the one where he was a football player with a kid. Was that Tooth Fairy? No, that's no. when he... There was a football one? He also did one where he's like, yeah, quarterback in football, even though he's fucking jacked. Why would he be that? Well, his biggest dream in life was to play football. Well, he played football in college, yeah. But he wanted to he go did pro. Okay, he yeah. wanted to go pro Which, in football. he's not good enough for that, no. And so he went into fake wrestling instead. Which is wild. But also, like, God, he's not the biggest celebrity ever. Yeah. Uh, he has tequila. He has energy drinks. He has shoes. He has... Workout gear. He's he, a national treasure. He yeah. did, he literally and it, him the rock or, or him and um shit. Who's his biggest acting partner? The little oh Kevin Hart. Yes, thank you. God. Yeah, I feel like those people like they're yeah Kevin Hart's also huge, but I feel like those are two people that like if you just were like oh my god you're the Rocky go hey man what's up yeah he's probably like a bigger celebrity because right. he would be he would be pretty cool because there's been videos and he's in Fast and Furious so yeah no. But this he doesn't, come, he he doesn't come in. He doesn't come in till maybe. Yeah, dude. If we can get the Rock to help review the, <laughs> come <laughs> on, it's our end goal. Yeah, everyone tag him. In this. Moist and Monday and the Rock and the Rock. He's just over there next to Elysium. Wait, Moist and Monday on the rocks. Oh, and we're sipping whiskey. Itself. Oh, my. no, we're gonna sip his tequila on the rocks. Oh, yeah, we have to in honor of him. Yeah. <laughs> We're, dude, if we we're, get him in No, house. I think we do it in honor of him, and then if we do get him, then it's just like in super honor of him. <laughs> and we'll have to, we'll have to, you'll have to buy a bigger rocking chair. He Extra won't, rocks. He won't yeah. fit in that rocking he chair. He won't fit in this fucking room. Elysia, move over. Yeah, dude, he's fucking we got huge. got Dwayne coming. Yeah, I, that's weird that his name's... Dwayne's a weird name. Dwayne, yeah. Dwayne. Yeah. D-W. That's how the word starts. D-W. The, yeah, which is a just it's very like, specific If you way. didn't speak English, you'd be like... D.W. Dwayne. But Dwayne. Dwayne. Yeah, Dwayne, 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 Dwayne. Is there any other name that... Or is there any other word that starts with D.W.? Mm, dwaft. <laughs> it's just yep. people that have speech impediments. Jesus <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> dwaft. <laughs> if you ever, if you dwaft that rock. <laughs> uh, but it, it makes me think of the character from Little Miss Sunshine. Uh, the boy's name is Dwayne. The guy who... Uh, doesn't Paul, doesn't Paul Dano? yeah he doesn't speak and then he realizes he's colorblind, which gets me every time. Sure does, but I've only seen that movie once for you, just so good to understand why you were crying all the time. <laughs> Did it make you cry? No, it's it's good. Movies will any movie can make me cry if it catches me in the right mood. That's why I watch it when I'm emotional. You watch it in the right mood, yeah. But I I love that movie though. Cause I did a whole report on that movie. I know, because also I think we talked about this last time. It's just, I'm never in the mood for a sad movie. Oh yeah, we've talked about this before, yeah. I think we talked about it last episode. I can't remember, dude. Me neither, because we drink too much on Moist Mondays. And we're so bulk filmed that it's like, we're Who bulk recorded. Who knows what it's we like, said. Uh, That's why I'm pumped that we're doing a second series. <laughs> yeah, where it's like, we have 100% for sure never talked about these before. Yeah, no. <laughs> Except for this episode, we've never talked about the Fast and the Furious uh, right Too now. moist, too Monday. No, because we have <laughs> ten more episodes that we have oh to record now. Oh my god, now. And it's all going to be extra content, too. <laughs> Usually people do this shit for Patreon exclusive. We're well, just going to release it for the, our two listeners. Because we got no fans, yeah. No, it's We're just, this, this, this podcast is literally just for us. No, it's because be we literally s- found out my girlfriend doesn't even listen. Maybe you should listen to those. Did you like the Fast and Furious? <laughs> she will. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be so funny if she like gets into our podcast because of the Fast and Furious reviews. Wait, speaking of which, happy Moist Monday, brother. Oh, yeah, we didn't say that. Cheers. <laughs> the Fast and the Furious series franchise movie is somebody's favorite. 
Yeah, absolutely. That also applies to bands. When you're making fun of a band. That every that's, band is somebody. Do you yeah. think, but like the Fast and the Furious 4 is somebody's favorite it's movie? It's somebody's favorite movie. Someone would probably watch that the, the day their grandma died or something. And that, and Jesus. I don't know. I'm just trying to think like people have different favorites for different reasons. And like, you know, that probably hit them. Wait, Tokyo you, Drift, dude, I lived in Japan for two years. It really do you have me. a... I th- we might have just talked about this, but do you have a absolute favorite movie? Oh man! So you're bad at that. Yeah. Well, dude, favorites are so tough for me because it's it's all depending on mood. Right. Because I I and agree I like- with that. Which in times my favorite changes, but I have a title. Like I have a favorite. Movie. I, have a, I have a favorite list, but like my cr- it's crazy because I've had the same but like, list right now. Number one favorite movie. Go say it. Five hundred summer. Really? Okay. I mean, but but then also goes Little Miss Sunshine. Yeah, but like my favorite movie is Labyrinth. No matter what, that's yeah. if I have to say a favorite favorite band. Go now. This is tough. Dude. Go now. I, uh, answer. Uh, answer. Uh, now. Right. Uh, now. 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 Uh, Bad Flower. Really? It's just what, it, dude. It's what I'm into right now. Because I thought Foo would be your Foo Fighters would be your overall favorite. See, that's the tough part. Is like. But right now, they're one of my favorites. But it's moods, dude. It's, it's I go through phases. I'll listen to Foo Fighters for weeks, no, like digging into their albums. That I fully agree with. But like for me, I have listed, I don't have like a set favorite because of I'm see, always. You know, I have listed a number one, like for I me. I can't do that. Bouncing Souls overall favorite movie. Bouncing or, Souls no, is your sorry, favorite band, movie. Nice. Band, yeah, band. Fuck me. Whatever. <laughs> favorite song right now. Go. Oh. Oh, go now. Oh, no, I literally I, go I, now. I try. What is to, I'm it? trying. What is it? What is it? I'm trying to re- say it. Say it right no, now. I'm trying say it right to remember now. No, what say it, it right I'm, now. I'm try- fucking go. Say it right now. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what it is. You piece of shit. Um. Say it. Say uh, it. What is it? What is it right now? Number one. Go now. I think right now it's either Johnny wants to fight or Stalker by Bad Flower. Oh. But then a couple weeks ago it was Yes Mom. By by um, I don't remember her name, but she got big on TikTok. I don't know. It's this. like the TikTok trend where people drop through the mirrors. There's like that. There's the like, I'm a I'm I'm the one to be that. Yeah, I'm the is one. Is that, that song called Yes Mom? Yeah, the song's called Yes Mom. Really? I was way into that song okay. for, for a couple so weeks. Okay, so that's like, right now your number one. I mean, that was a couple weeks ago number one. Okay. I think the Bad Flowers. Are, I, I I don't like my liked songs on Spotify are like 600 plus, dude. Well, yeah, no, mine. Like, oh, and also, <laughs> uh, I've been really into uh, Giving Up uh, by Linkin Park. It starts oh. off with like this really cool. Yeah, no, you sent that to dude, me. Yeah, I love that song. Okay, and interesting. Chester has like a 19 second scream in that song. Mm-hmm. It's fucking yeah, uh, yeah. It's weird you don't have a rehearsed just number one. It, it's always changing. Like obviously, I but love like, like I, I no. love a bunch of like. So I get the idea of the ever changing favorite song. Like my favorite song right now is not is different than my overall favorite song. I mean, dude, I could easily say Everlong. There you I go. could easily say "Smells Like Teen Spirit." Really, I love that song. Well, I mean, but that's but, not but the a, best Nirvana. Song, no, though. but like, but but like, there's easy answers, and it's like, oh, that would make sense. But it's See, like, ask me, what's your favorite song? "Ebb and Flow" by Larry and His Flask. I love that song. That's it's a perfect it's in song. my like Spotify song. It's a perfect song, dude. That song. Every time that song comes on, it makes me smile. Yeah, it, dude. I love that song. No, that live when all the music comes together was. Oh, you saw that live? Yes, I've seen that band live, and they're one of the best bands ever. Did you know who they were before you saw? Yes. Them? So I. That's that's folk punk, right? N- I would say it's just folk. Eb or er, Larry and His Flask. Feel free to look them up. They're incredible. Yeah, that song Ebb and Flow, dude. Incredible. It's perfect. It's so good. No, but um, that seeing that band live was one of my favorite experiences because the entire band was front row at the venue we saw in which they moved their drum set to the front of the stage. Whoa, so they were all Aligned. in linear. Yes. No. That's really cool. And um, they're... Because they... Don't they're, they, don't they have a lot of people in their band? Probably like they have a six bunch or of seven. Yeah, they have a bunch of different weird instruments. They have guitarists, mandolin players, yeah. and a stand-up bass player. Oh, they have a stand-up bass? But their stand-up bass... I don't know if he's the original, but still, when I saw him, he was the closest thing to a Muppet I've ever seen <laughs> besides real Muppets. No, so you know. But he how, was a person. Yeah, so you know how big a stand-up bass is. Right? Oh yeah, I used to play it. He threw. He all right. So you know when Eddie Van Halen played the guitar and he put it on his back. Yeah, legendary. This, this guy did it with a stand-up bass. That's heavy as fuck. Yes, and it's and it's huge. huge. It's huge. He a, a stand-up bass is the size of a person. He put it on both of his shoulders and played it on his shoulders. How? 
He's the, a fucking muppet. He would also fuck? pick it up and sprint, and you would hear it plucking during the song, and he would oh just be running laps God. on the stage. No, but they put the drum set center stage because also the drummer is one of the one of the singers. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. They have like I mean everybody sings and they, they do like backup and like yeah, yeah so harmonize. everybody sings yeah. but they have like three Dude, big when it, singers when the all band. the vocals come together it's like ooh, it sounds so the good. way folk and folk punk does it when everything comes together i think nothing Dude, folk punk compares. is su- folk punk is such a cool genre that that not a lot of people know about and i didn't know about it till you told me about mm-hmm. it and it's such a cool genre to go down because it's like so you get that really cool folk aspect in the punk life and i feel like it's a genre that a lot of people would enjoy yeah they just don't know about it yeah it's such an indie genre so if i was to recommend any folk punk song it'd be days and days oh yes misanthropic drunken loner yeah it's a perfect song that's another one of my liked spotify no that song's incredible because that song nothing makes me smile wider than that song when have you seen that have you seen that live yeah no i've seen so the lead singer has three different bands. I've seen one of his bands live. And I remember when I saw him and I met him, I was looking at him like I would Tom Cruise. Well, you were just like... In awe. You're real. Yeah, and he... Tom Cruise was your go-to? Like the biggest celebrity. I, th- I literally thought you said... Because when you said Tom, I thought you were going to say Tom Segura. That's like my biggest like celebrity crush. Yeah, that's what I thought point. you were gonna say. No, but like Tom Cruise isn't like an A list celebrity. Oh, so you're like I know of you. Maybe I'm not the biggest fan of you, but well, oh my god, that's Tom Cruise. This guy I get what I'm you're the saying. biggest fan of. Yeah, yeah, I get what you're no, saying. No, it was it's, like, an, yeah, oh Tom my god, Cruise this level. person is the same crowd as me. Oh, was, was he also like five one? I don't know. That's, isn't Tom Cruise? Oh like yeah, really Tom short? Cruise is tiny. Yeah, <laughs> this guy not big, but um, Jesse something. But um, there's nine people in the audience. Whoa, and I was, super small show. I was staring at him in a way of like, holy shit, you're real. And I noticed him notice me doing that. <laughs> it's so creepy. Another man looking at a man like that. Yeah. No, like, and you're probably dressed well, like how you're dressed like, right now. And it's just Well, like, there's like eight people behind me, Max. Yeah. No, so like the idea that he was a huge celebrity to me and like I ended up splitting a bottle of fireball with him because oh, that's so cool. Well, like the entire crowd split a bottle with the entire band because it's a it was like a six person band probably yeah but, so yeah. like it's just like well yeah we're all here we're all here let's just hang out we have bottles so might as well everybody drink it what's the fucking point of like, just the band drinking it, yeah right? so like everybody drank and everybody like sang along with it was weird because it was in this tiny fucking so venue. you guys are drinking and hanging out while they were playing yeah like, what? It was That's just hanging so, out. I thought I thought maybe that was like an after the show thing. No, they were a touring band. And like That's so cool this as fuck you were doing that while they were playing. So it was like that was basically like a kind of practice forum slash you know. Just, well like so this cool. guy, this guy has like three separate bands and their main band is the biggest in the genre. Days and days is yeah, one huge. of the biggest full punk so bands. So good. I think who I saw Wait, fuck, they because they have two big bands that I was confused. Okay, so they're they have another band named Chad Hates George. Okay, I've never heard of them. No, you wouldn't. And then the band I saw was called Escape from the Zoo. That's a cool name. Yeah. Like and name. great band. Folk punk? Yes. Yeah. All of them are in the same genre because it's him. So like the interesting thing one is like his main band, him and a partner who has at one point been rumored to be his sister, one point rumored to be his girlfriend. I can't, I don't know the actual fact. But Scandalous, that sounds like a porn hub. No, me. but Escape from the Zoo, <laughs> the girl in the band is his wife. Oh, okay. I've seen their wedding photos because like they're in the same groups as me. Yeah. So I know that, that he's married to this girl. And it's his sister. No. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah. No, so Days and Days is the biggest band. Dude, I also voice, recommend looking up Chad Hates George and Escape from the His voice zero. is so like iconic and like... In the scene, I, yeah. I wouldn't necessarily say he's a good singer. It's just but it, so it's just, specific. It's just so specific and it fits the vibe and the genre so well. Yeah. Especially like, dude, that misanthropic song is... Misanthropic so, Drunken Loner. Oh my Please God. Please look it up. It's it is a so, perfect song to... So good. Incumbents the genre. It's so good. Dude, I love that song. Yeah. It's, dude, what was that one song? So you were, you showed me folk punk, bro, yeah. like two years ago now. There was one song you showed me <laughs> where, I mean, you showed me a lot of them, but it was a, it was a YouTube live 
Like it was a live performance. Fuck. You know what I'm talking about? I it was just a guy and his um banjo. Was that what it was? Oh, yeah. like on the street? Oh, that's what you're so thinking. So I'm thinking of. I'm thinking um, about on the street, but then I also think in the studio. Ghost there was a studio one and then there was fuck. on the street one. There were two really cool ones you showed me. Rail Yard Ghosts, I think is the name of that. Yeah, band. I haven't heard that song, but I remember really liking that. Yes, no, they are incredible. There I have a studio version which is worse than their live version. Yeah, the version. live version's yeah. the best. That's why we watched it on YouTube. Rail Yard Ghosts. Yes. Look them up. They are incredible. And what's crazy about like the folk punk genre is like they sang on the streets. So yeah, that is they're something street that, performers slash homeless slash they're dirty people, but they make really cool music. And it's like it just and they don't care. They're connects. just they're just living life. So like if I would have wandered across that performance, I would have lost my fucking mind. Like but, just on the street. Yeah, but you'd you, have been like, but what the during f- that performance, you watch everyday people just walk past. Yeah, they do, and they and don't just... give a shit. But to me, that's like one of the best. It's so good dude. musical like accomplishments of it's, our lifetime it's so good there's there's also a uh a live performance like in a studio that you showed me oh that i can't quite remember that would have been someone else i bet yeah it was somebody else but it was in the genre sure yeah uh, but it, but this was like i remember watching actually slash, fuck who i remember that? watching I I slash listening to it when we went to go kayak so we were yeah. on like a two-hour drive and no, we were and we were listening to it that? i know who that is it's gonna drive me crazy I'm, I'm like really in the mood for folk punk especially since it's like nice out and like because oh it's like God. folk punk is like very like summer. King Strang. That's who King that was. King Strang. Yeah. So I'm glad this is recorded now because I <laughs> haven't watched or listened to these since that moment. And I'm glad it came up so now I can rediscover them because they're both so good. No, that was King Strang. I'm looking him up. The song was Poor Taste by King Strang. Can you can you play a little? Are we allowed to play songs? Not Spotify. This I'm pulling music from Spotify so you'd think so, right? Maybe just we'll just do a little clip. <laughs> It's it's so good, and it in has such a, a different. It, it has such a nice, cool vibe. And what's crazy is, like the music that we use for the podcast is like this fifties. It has that vibe, yeah, it's like, got that vibe of like sure. this fifties, like raw, like it's real. Yeah, it's, it's just real raw. Him singing exactly what he wants. He was so excited to write this for you. There's oh. nobody touching it besides him. Yeah, and and you can folk punk. You can feel the emotion. Yeah. For sure, because and you can understand the circumstance, because like yeah, oh, dude, it's 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 such a cool genre. I always forget about it because it's so small. But I'm glad I know of it, and I'm glad I'm gonna like now that this is recorded. I'm gonna like dive deep yeah, back into it. Well, you edit this, you'll have to, yeah. Because like I think I have a folk punk playlist that I made two summers ago. Okay. When I was getting way into them after you showed me them, right? I'm gonna listen to that. It's like great summer music. Yeah. No. Like, if you're like at like a at like an outdoor party or an outdoor pool party and it's the middle of the day, put on fucking folk punk and just... Well, because the idea of what people love about country, folk punk covers it for me. Oh, yes. But it's... I like it because it's more upbeat and just it's just more feel good. Yeah. In country... Some just, of it is, Country's yeah. just... Well, if you really dive in, maybe it's more depressing. Well, sure, you listen to an album, they touch everything, yeah. Yeah, but but just like the vibe because it has a little punk vibe, you know? It's like, yeah. It's like, oh, you just want to dance. Well, it's also... You just want to move. You just want to be dirty. But like, it's one of the few, like, if you listen to performers, like, if you listen to a mainstream performer and they're like, fuck this, fuck society, you know that they're bullshit. Like, I'm no offense, but Green Day, like, saying like, Green Day still being a punk band, you know it's kind of bullshit because they're going through mainstream aesthetics. Like, especially, especially the people who pay them, it's all bullshit. And they're living in mansions. Like, yeah. But like when you listen to like these folk punk bands, like, you know, like street. you yeah. know, they're like legitimately like they've been homeless for a while. Yeah, they used all their money to produce this album. The things they're saying, they truly that's, believe. Dude, in. That's the tough part. Is like 
Like when Green Day started, yeah, they were they fucking, used, they were they yeah, yeah, that's what they believed and that's how they felt and that's what they were doing because they were starting out. I love But then they blew up and now and now they're still releasing albums and it was like current uh, this is gonna be a hot take. I don't even know their last album. Their current their current shit sucks and it doesn't even sound like Green Day. The last their, I knew was Uno Dos Trace and you could maybe like Oh, but even then maybe one song off that was good. You could maybe like shove that together to make an okay album. Yeah, if that but there was three albums. I, their last or the latest album that I know of is uh, Radio Revolution or something. There was a there was a single I don't know that, that was before or after. There might be another one out after that, but there was a single on that that doesn't even sound like them. Like his voice doesn't even sound like him anymore. No, I mean it's all just so it's all it's so produced. That's okay. the word. It's so produced. Revolution and Radio. Yeah, was what you're talking about. Yeah, that was three albums ago. They have three more. Oh wait, they did Insomniac, which is a twenty first at. 25th anniversary oh they re-released it but they probably overproduced it well because what their album the album was in uh, insomniacs yeah so yeah that did. was one of their first that came out like in the yeah 90s. so they that's, did, a great, that's actually a really good album no that's a great album but i don't know really if they it's a deluxe edition oh so, so they just released they, they re-released it for the 50th yeah okay, they didn't re-record sense. it they've done no fun mondays and father of all so like i think i know the single from father of me all me too it's, i think that's it's just it, terrible it's terrible 2020 they released two albums in 2020 oh my god dude i saw green day a couple years ago at wells fargo which is the arena in uh Des Moines, where we, live, where we yeah. live and i was front row for it yeah and like the the stage like did this and then came out like a like a like a walkway a walkway and i was front row of the walkway cool and i have a photo i'll post it when we when we post this episode but i took this photo and it looks like a professional photo like uh, what's his name? What's the uh, Billy Joel? Billy Billy Joe. Billy Joe. Billy Joe. Yeah. He came out on the walkway and he had the Iowa flag with him. Cool. And he literally stood right in front of me and my girlfriend at the time. We were there, and he he put the Iowa flag behind him like it was a freaking like <laughs> like it was a freaking banner ca- like a cape like, like for was, him yeah yeah and he was like holding it and i have a photo of him holding the iowa flag just right in front of me and it's crazy how short he is and they were great live <laughs> they were great live i had just had to throw the dig in sure. uh, but they were great live but their new stuff sucks and that's with a lot of bands like what it's hard when you're a punk artist and you make it because because you're no the longer value, anti-establishment yeah. the punk values don't make sense anymore because you made it and that's the tough part because you want to make it it's a very fine so- edge, double edged sword, dude. Yeah, the idea you, of being be, a punk that makes it, yeah, a punk that makes it because yeah, you can still you can still wear skinny jeans, you can still have tattoos, you can still dye your hair, but you're fucking driving a Rolls Royce, you're fucking living You've in a made it, you're living in a mansion, Against like a you're studio, not. That means you didn't make it, yeah. And that's the tough part because your first couple albums is when you were struggling, and that's where your punk roots come from, right? So like, I don't know if it doesn't necessarily lose the roots, and they don't necessarily lose like the essence of punk but they definitely aren't the struggling punk that's the tough part it's with a lot of this the you know idea what I mean? of making it as a punk is fucking weird well the idea of making it as any musician like, but like punk wh- is anti-establishment and the idea of the music scene being a, an establishment it's weird making it within itself wes and i talk talk about this a lot uh um, yeah just for any for any genre you have your whole life to make your first album yeah then after that, the second album is always the worst because you have your whole life to make it so great, and and you're putting. But then after that, like if that album blows up, mm-hmm. the studio's like you got to put out another album, and you're like, what the fuck? You're like, am I, I don't. To do? Yeah, that's yeah. that's why a lot of bands, you know, there's the second album shitty. The yeah. second album because they because they 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 literally a lot of the songs on their first album are songs they've had in the forever forever, and the, the, you can feel the emotion. They, they were always struggling thought about doing this. Yeah. yeah, I do like that's bringing a bad flower again. Like <laughs> their their first album blew up and they got huge. You know, okay, I'm not okay. And then they put they just released their second album. And they, wait, oh, their recent albums, their second album. Yeah, that's their second album. Holy yeah, shit! Yeah, and they're like one of the biggest alt rock bands. They blew up on their first. Yeah, Holy shit! That's their first album. I mean, they released a couple singles. Good for that. And EPs. Yeah, Fuck. but that's, that was their first album. That the blew fact up. that their second album was decent is well, insane. Yeah, I love their second album. But uh, I was reading a, an interview in an article about it because people were like, "Oh, it's your sophomore album. How do you, like?" Because that's what they call it, you know, like freshmen. Yeah. yeah. It, but it's your sophomore album. You blew up on your first album. Like, how is there pressure? And like the lead singer was like, we're just going to make an album that we want to make. And we're going to make it not as good and not as produced. <laughs> and we're going to make it worse. I like that. Though. Because he was like, 
because he knows the importance of a second yeah. album and he's like this is us i and respect what, that. yeah and i thought that was really cool he's like because there's there's one song on the album it's like a really slow song that i really like but it just goes and it like repeats 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 sure. and then just instantly it doesn't fade out yeah it just cuts cool like it's just like it's just like the first my first listen through of that album when that song came on I was like really digging it I was like vibing and it was like and looping it and then it literally just cut and I thought my Spotify just like died fuck and then it goes cool. into the next song I like they did that, that on again. they did that on purpose cool like that's so cool hey we're gonna see them next week yeah or two weeks yeah in a couple weeks and then by the time we listen to this episode it would be like a month ago I will dude. So uh, we're gonna uh, let me talk about Bad Flower, dude. I love Bad Flower. Uh, no, because you have a yeah, dude, personal this, this history is, with this them. This is the craziest fucking. So Bad Flower, did I say they were my favorite band? They're one of my favorite bands. You but, listen to them as maybe favorite songs. Yeah, yeah, well, and I think I might have said they're my favorite right yeah. now. I just like I like the the vibe. From what I know about them, I like them. They're just because they're all right. They're, so they're, for they're, my they're history, emotional. They're your favorite and my girlfriend's favorite. Yeah, which is really cool, and that's how we connect. And yeah. you can not be so in the picture. I for like. That. I enjoy it. Um, but, it's fine. But what's cool is they're like alt rock. They have cool riffs, but then they're also like emotional and talk about depression and like yeah. mental health and all. And they talk about a bunch of other things, obviously. But and you've met them, right? No. Oh, well, okay. met kind of. So. I knew of them because they were blowing up on their first album. Yes. And their song Heroin was huge. Yes. And that song like really hit me because I was in a, a dark spot, you know, and that song is about like a toxic relationship, you know, kind of because it's like you're, you're addicted to heroin. So I would like listen to that song and repeat. And then my band at the time. Had the, what? Hazer. Yeah. My band at the time, Hazer. Uh, Look them up, Hazer. Yeah, H H A Z E R. H A Z E R. Check pretty, them out. We're pretty cool. We had the opportunity to open up for them at a show in Des Moines, Iowa, <laughs> which is really cool as part of their tour. So I like really dove into them because I was like, "Hey, we're gonna play with this band. They're up and coming." Because they weren't like just their big hit was her- heroin at the at the time. They've had a couple others since then, like Ghost. I think blew up. But like their whole album did really well, dude. The whole album, their first album, so good. Their second <laughs> album, so good. Yeah. But we opened up for him. We were direct support. So the first band that opened up was a band that we were friends with. I can't remember their name with, but we played with them Another a lot. Lo- a smaller local yeah. band. Uh, yeah. And then it was us. And then it was Bad Flower. Cool. We were direct support. And it was the first sold out show that I had ever played. I love that. And it was on a school night. God, because I remember Which, reading. No, I remember reading this We weren't show. friends at this time. No, so I was pissed you were mad at this show too how many shows were you mad at because you brought up the jake campbell no it was you opening up for campbell and you opening up for this i was like god fuck no three you opening for campbell you opening for this and you opening up for um fuck what's his name he was in the lost boys oh my god what's his name what's his his name name? what's his name dude that was the worst fucking show i've ever been to i'm gonna look it up real quick because we have to know his name dude what's his name dude that was it that's a story on its own, dude. I'll tell that story yeah. next. That's that show was the that was a sold out show. That show was the worst. Corey Feldman. Corey Feldman. I was so yeah. pissed. You opened up for Corey Feldman. It was terrible, dude. It was it was a terrible show. He's, oh, he's pissed. not good. All right, but go with the okay. So the Bat, sh- Batflower yeah. first sold out show <laughs> I've ever played. So it was not only a first solo show I've ever played at a venue, one of my favorite venues I've ever been to, Woolies. A venue we grew up going to. Grew up to going to. Every week. Dude, being on that stage is so cool because the stage is rised up basically at height level. Yeah. I'd played there a couple times before, so I knew that. But like a sold out show at Woolies, you can't see. You just see like the first couple of rows and then you, you see like 30 people. Max. And then and then it just goes to black. But, you, just, but you know it's full. You know it's, it's full because I was just in there drinking beer with people. And it's so That's surreal so cool. and crazy. And like, I remember showing up because we were loading in and Battleflower was doing a sound check, sound check. And they were doing the sound check for um, Xanax, which is cool. the opening, which is like the, the uh, yeah. what happens when you mix uh, blow in a MacBook Pro. But, and then they, yeah. it's like the breakdown part. I did, they were sound checking with that and it was so cool. And they had like the lights set up and. It was so cool walking into the venue. No one's there. Pe- there was a line outside yeah. when we were unloading. With my current girlfriend. Was she in that line? Yeah. yeah. So I was walking past her with guitars, probably. Yeah. <laughs> we were just, lo- shit. yeah, just low. It was, it was, it was a nice day, and it was just such a cool experience that I'll never forget. I did not go to work the next day. 
Cool. Because I was vibing so hard that I got way too drunk. I mean, it's such a bummer to go to work after a show. I know, dude. It it because because that first show sold out show mm -hmm. started a span of three sold out shows in a row Holy that we shit. played. Wow. Yeah, over three months. Fuck. One a month over the summer. This is this is before COVID. Twenty nineteen. Yeah, yeah. This is this is literally when I thought our band was going to take off. Yeah. Because we were on the trajectory of taking off. Yeah. So it literally went sold out show Bad Flower. Yes. Up and coming rock band. So incredible. Then it went sold out show with Pop Evil, Ice Nine Kills. That's a fucking obvious sold out. Yeah. Incredible. I've seen both of them. Incredible live. heavy metal, heavier rock show. Ice yeah. Nine Kills, super heavy. Yeah. Sold out show. I don't love Pop Evil, but Ice Nine Kills is I think Yeah. And a lot cool. of people came for them because yeah. they have a huge following. And then the third, this is literally one month, one month, one month in a row. What was your third month? Third one. Buck Cherry. <laughs> so it, yeah, it's it's laughable. A real shitty band, but but they're yeah, they huge. Sell out. They're yeah. they're huge, and like people the love crowd, crazy the bitch. crowd differences from those three shows was so weird. Because oh right, because it goes young. Bad Flower was young alternative rock crowd, kind of maybe. Some I indie think people. Kills is younger. I think Kills is younger. I sold a ticket to a guy I was working with at the time that was in his mid thirties. Yeah, but Buck Cherry, that's like forty um, and fifty. Yeah, Buck Cherry, there was there was a bunch of uh motorcycle yeah, that's, like cigarette smoking that's chicks. Beef every, turkey and nachos, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Chicks everywhere and like uh it was just it, very, but it was a sold out show. So yeah. it was like it was, I mean, it was hey, cool. You're a crazy but I will bitch. say, dude, Buck Cherry sucked. <laughs> they were so bad. I, I got a very funny story. I mean if you're a fan of Buck Cherry, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm but sorry, but I'm not, not sorry. Anymore. Pick a different band. Uh, they they literally suck. Like we said earlier, everyone has a favorite different band. But dude, Bug Cherry was playing, and I remember he said this. This is word for word, direct quote. Okay. He said, "Hey, this next song is our Purple Rain." <laughs> and then they went into a slow song. How was it? Terrible. His <laughs> vocals were. I was like, you gotta be so fucking. This is our Purple yeah. Rain. He compared himself to Prince, which is. No, I mean, but like Purple Rain to Prince is still different. Like, cause that's like yeah, but Prince's Pur masterpiece. I know, but he's comparing like, hey, this next song is our masterpiece. Our Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. Like and it was just a, it was just a terrible slow song. Best. And I, I was in the back with, with uh, when my bandmates and we were laughing the whole show cause he, <laughs> it was fucking terrible. But when we said that, we were like, holy did shit. Did he just say that? And then they went into the song and we were like. This song sucks. Let alone, like, <laughs> yeah, let alone, and then you're, it was just so. But it was a so much show, so it was like, oh man, it's so funny. All right, so what do you think your personal purple rain is? <laughs> Dude, you can't <laughs> ask me that. <laughs> you can't compare a song to Purple Rain. It's a masterpiece. Yeah, but what's yours? Like, <sighs> of all the bands you've been in, <laughs> I don't want to ever like. I don't want to <laughs> say this. You've been in like eight bands, though. What's your personal Purple Rain? And I haven't been in that many. You've been in probably like five because I was four of them. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was in two at a time recently. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite songs that's probably just musically really cool because there's a lot of different different parts, oh, yeah. a lot of different transitions, a lot of different like buildups, and yeah. is uh, it's a Hazer song called The Good Book. Okay. So I've listened to it because I've listened to all of your stuff. Yeah, you definitely recognize it. It's I think it's one of our most cool, weird songs that's just like, how did we come up with that? Okay, so the good book is Robert's Purple Rain. I don't want to say that. But we are. Uh, but that that's just like what comes to my mind. So like, check that out as well. It's, dude, it's a really cool song because it starts with like a drum click and then a bass line. And then it goes into like this really cool vocal. I made a lyric video for it when it first got released. And then like, dude... There, what's so cool is there's there's parts of the song that like it, we do it once and then never come back to it. Oh, cool! Because like you know normal song structure is like yeah you go back to stuff and it's like it's just it's just such a, and then the way it builds and it's it's such a cool fucking song. Cool. And I and it's so much fun to play live. But speaking of playing live, dude, I got I got one more story to tell. All right, who's it with? Corey Feldman. Fuck yeah. To tease you. So we... Oh, I love him. And, I, and, and I, I'm and i aware uh, to oh hate him. Oh my God. This is one of the... This, is, this was a sold out show. 
So it's like your fourth. I don't remember when this happened, but I remember Bad Floor being my first. So maybe this was my fourth. It kind of blurs together once you sell, once you sell a lot of shows. Fuck off. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I just said that to be a fucking douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> I have not had that many sold out shows. Uh, dude, there was one time we played in Minneapolis for seven people. Nice. We were on a tour, and we played like this really cool theater, and then yeah. the next night, we we were on a tour with a, a, a three-day tour with the same band. Okay. They're from Minneapolis. Who's the band? The Missing Letters. They were, okay. They were really cool. Yeah, they're cool. I've listened to them, and I've uh, seen them before. Yeah, so we played a theater with them. It was awesome, and then we played like this weird club where we walked in, and we could barely feel the stage was so small and it was like kind of, it, it felt like we were playing a Java Joe's. But you guys are only a four person band. So it's already like the smallest a band usually is. And you could barely fit. And on we the could stage. barely fit on the stage. Weird. And it, and it felt like it was just a place where someone would play with an acoustic guitar for background music. One person. Yeah. That makes sense. And <laughs> it was like a rock show. And like we made like $40. So and it you, was like if you have a show for seven people, do you still give it your all? Well, yeah, you but, do your best, but too. it's definitely not, I'm not. I'm still giving my all and getting into the music. Yeah, but I'm not, dude. When you play like Woolies or yeah. when you play like these bigger shows with sold, you get energy off the crowd. No, so my, and you really like my weird experience is playing music. I've only played for a sold out show and it's cool, dude. And you, you get, you vibe off the energy. Again, that's my only two shows. My first show, and my second show it's was definitely, for a sold out dude, show. It's perspective because when you play a show like that, you're like, okay, we're not hot shit. We're not right. Like it's like it's, and then also like when you play a sold out show, you got to go to fucking work the next day, which I didn't. And then <laughs> the night of the bad flower show, I remember cause I drank too much. My boss texted me and said, you better be in bed with two girls right now. Yeah. Because I did a no call, no show the next day. Did you see <laughs> a photo with two legs? No. And I said, uh, no. <laughs> and then like when I went in the next day, he's like, uh, you got to let me know when you're not going to be here. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I get that. But I was living, having the time of my life. Okay. No. So after my last show, I was late for work. So my boss called me. Well, so I had already arrived for work, but I was in my specific area, so he didn't see me. He was like, you better have lost your fucking arm at your show last night. <laughs> That's what he said to me. I was like, no, I'm here. I'm I'm just like right next to you. What? Yeah. He like yelled at you? He didn't yell at me, but it was like they gave me an important shift. <laughs> That's actually really yeah. funny. You should have been like, all right, I'm going to go home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here, but. See you later. No, like I was scarred up and still like kind of bleeding and a little broken from the night before. It's, but yeah, dude, it's hard going to work the next day. <laughs> you have no idea from my perspective. Well, no, but I mean, like just just performing energy wise, energy yes. wise, because it's like, man, you're doing something you love. The passion's into it. Yeah, and then you have to wake up and go to something that just fucking you clock in and pays the bills yeah, and you don't and you don't care about it and and it's just like perspective and it's just my it really is, it really kind of grounds you but depresses you. Well, because my issue is like, okay, so last night I fractured all the fingers in my right hand <laughs> from setting it off in an animal trap. I have a little bit of glass in my feet and like my body hurts from getting stapled. So it's like, it's weird, but I also understand the energy aspect of like, I love doing that and I love making money doing that. And that's, but like, yeah. But it's a different, <laughs> yeah. it's for sure different because I <laughs> will wake up the next day with a sore neck from head banging. And, and that's will, about it. I will wake up with a sore chest from getting stapled and a sledgehammer. And there's against dried it. blood all over your all body. All over it. Yeah. <laughs> no, and also, definitely dried blood on my freaking finger. Yeah, because also, like, I don't recommend doing freak show for anybody out there. But like, it's cool, though. Another aspect, yeah, is my type of performance is freak show acts where I hammer shit into my skull. I staple things to my body and I get, I lay on a bed of nails. So like any excuse I have is well deserved, but yeah. also my fault. Yeah, it's, it's self, self. It's an agreed yeah. upon affliction. That's what's tough about it, but you love it. That's what sucks is like, you wouldn't recommend it, but like you kind of, it's, I feel like that's also a double edged sword. Because, you have to really because do you it to understand the like appeal of it, but, but like also the <sighs> full appeal of it kind of sucks because you're not making that much money. But what I'm saying is it's kind of a double edged sword because you you wouldn't recommend it, but you want people to get into it because it's a dying thing. Sure, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, because there's like it's a very niche. I mean, in our city alone, because I talked to somebody else today about producing a show, and he listed off a performer. He's like, well, I bet you know more performers and within the city he listed one of the two i know of 
Yeah, so there's probably... Besides me, yeah. There's probably... Five. Five max. max. Yeah. And you know most of them. Yeah. And two of them are retired. Yeah, which... Including the one he listed. She listed the one you know, yeah. Yeah, Serena. She's she's really cool. Because she's a great sword swallower. Oh, she's... And she's a... And she did it for a long... She she toured doing it, which is really cool. And he knew who she toured with. Enigma, who is one of the biggest... Oh, he's in in Guinness... Guinness Book, Book of World, World Records. Records. Yeah, yeah, dude. That yeah, it's really cool. That Which she's Michael, the one. She's she's tattooed me, dude. That's what's really cool. Oh right, yeah. yeah she she did this twenty three. Yeah, she she was as far as she considers the first pregnant sword swallower ever. Whoa! Yeah, stabbing the that's baby. Like, yeah, that's like that's like the opposite way to abort it. I know. Yeah. Is, uh, is that an edgy joke? No, because she <laughs> said that her joke used to be like, "Oh, better abort this," and she, oh, would she would say, yes, yeah. I'm so glad we're on the same page. So, but then when she got pregnant, she's like, "I promise you, this is safe," and swallowed. <laughs> so, so we've met her child before. Yeah, yeah. I think she has two now, which is crazy. Jesus, yeah. yeah. Um, but going back, yes, to childs. What child performers? Corey Feldman. Oh my God! Okay, did you yeah, like the way okay, I connected yeah. those dots? I, you lost me for a second. Yeah, there, but bud. I brought you back. Put you, you sure in, did. Corey Feldman. <laughs> this was a weird show because we got asked to play it because it was at a venue that we played it a lot up in Waterloo, Iowa. Oh, I thought it was. Lo- I think no, we played it, the Des Moines one. No, it was in Spicoli's. We did not do the Des Moines one. It was. It was. In oh Waterloo. shit! Okay. So was the Des Moines one at Woolies? Yes. Okay, we didn't do that one. That would have been probably this. Spicoli's is a lot smaller of a venue. I'm surprised he played that. Uh, but we were really close with the club owner, and uh, we we played that show. Oh, my God. Sold out. It was one of those shows where people are waiting outside. People are having their freaking childhood nostalgia gear on. People are holding shit to get autographs. All right, because like, for and stuff. those of you who don't know who Corey Feldman is by name, he was in The Goonies, The Lost Boys, yeah. Stand By Me. Yeah. I think those were his big three. Those are his big three, and it's just like, cool. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, no, he's like Goonies, awesome. He, Goonies is huge. He played Mouth in the Goonies. He played a Frog Brother. But yeah, it's like in the Lost those Boys. movies are fine. He was also in um, Friday the Thirteenth Part Four, arguably the best. Oh, he's in Part version. Four. Yeah. Who did he, did he die? He played the no. He played the child that killed Jason. Whoa! So yeah. he was he was an no he established was, child actor. No, he was one of the. Biggest child actors of all time. Yeah, he's friends. I with mean, Mike. he was in Stand by Me. He was f- friends with Michael Jackson. He was friends with Macaulay Culkin or whatever his name is. Yeah, which I still think he wasn't in many films, but I still think he's bigger than Corey Feldman. Macaulay Culkin. Yeah, because of Home Alone. I and mean, the, yeah, because that's a Christmas movie in a way. Yeah, and it's but replayed every. Corey year. Feldman. He was in. He also did Corey and Corey. Where's Corey Feldman and Corey? Fuck, what's his name? I, I don't did. even know what that is. He was the other Corey in the Lost Boys, and he died. And they did like a, a spinoff thing, or like they did a, a their own series called Corey and Corey, not Corey Taylor. Fuck, this is gonna piss me off. I but, literally have no idea which. Well, I did. I literally didn't know who he was. Okay, well, this I've one, seen the Goonies like three times. Yeah, he's in the Goonies, but yeah, but, no. I, but he's not. I wouldn't. If you if you played me the Goonies right now, I I probably wouldn't know who he, who he is. He was Mouth. Okay, wait. I see, I don't know the Goonies that well. I don't know who Mouth is. Corey I know. Ham. I, was, Corey and Corey were Corey and Fel, Corey Feldman and Corey Haim. The only thing I can take away from the Goonies is the uh, the they, shake thing. They also did License Drive, and you're talking about the not the Truffle Shuffle. The, the Truffle Shuffle, yeah, is that what it's called? Yeah, it's just Truffle Shuffle. Where it's like you get, in order to get through the gate, you get, yeah. that's how little I've seen the movie, but that's an iconic scene. No, but Corey Haim died in 2010 of pneumonia. But Corey, what a way Fel- to go. Corey Feldman claimed that the two of them were like abused and raped by LA society throughout the 80s and 90s. I mean, and that's why they're, I believe it. I mean, dude, he's but, fucked up. Because the two of them were like the it factor. He's for fucked a up. Long time. But also, he, when you're a child actor, it's just fucked up in general. Like, you, there's so much on you and pressure. No, and, I think he got, I think he like, Experience everything he claims, but then also he went crazy after the fact yeah, this because is, of the yeah, trauma. Because of, yeah, because he but, kept talking about it forever. In which case, the band you even, Corey Feldman and the what is it, the Hearts or the the Corey the Feldman angels. and the Angels? Oh my no, god! No, because later on he claimed that some of the Angels were spies sent to him to perform terribly <laughs> and get information on him. No, so I think he went through all this trauma and then and then got crazy and talked about all these factors later on. 
Because you played with the oh, Angels. What is yeah. your what is your opinion this on This is my perspective of the Angels. So Corey people, Feldman and the Angels. Yeah, yes. Corey Feldman and the Angels. So we showed up, obviously, and Corey Feldman and the Angels <laughs> were already there. We were loading in. Oh, we normally at this venue loaded in through the back. Okay. We were because this was a venue you were very yeah. We played at this venue probably once a month. This is where the band like was started before I joined the band. They were started like they've been playing the band that I was in was playing at this venue for so long. So we normally load him through the back, but like his bus was there. They had the bag blocked off. We couldn't load him through the back, so we had to load him through the front. So we had to load him through in front of all the people in the line, which is that's fine. But they were sound checking. And obviously, when you're sound check, at least when you're in a band like that, you're just regular. You're in street clothes. What year was this? Do you think this would have been 2017, 18, 19? No, because Bad Flower was nineteen. It would have been like it was pre-COVID. Okay, so nineteen, nineteen, probably. eighteen, nineteen. Yeah, yeah, eighteen, nineteen. But we load in, and obviously, when you're doing sound check, they're not in costume yet. I get that. But he's doing sound check, Corey Feldman, and the Angels. The Angels are supposed to be like these, you know, attractive girls. Dude, no joke. First reaction. I talked about this with my bandmates. We walked in. First off, oh, it sounded rough. It's the just just the vocals, the music, it sounded rough. So at this point, he was producing his album that came out in 2016, Angelic to the Core, Angelic Funkadelic, Angelic Rockadelic was the name of the album. Jesus Christ. <laughs> But I remember first impressions of walking in on soundtrack. Obviously, they're not in costume yet, but all the angels looked rough. And this is going to be bad to say. This is gonna be this might offend some people, but this is what they look like to me. They all looked like heroin addicts. Like they looked yeah. rough. <laughs> and I know that that might be offensive, but like no that's, disrespect. That's, that's literally like that's literally they looked like they had giant bags under their eyes. Yeah, they were like, like not slouching. Making fun of it. No, I'm not making. That's we're literally where it's a condition. Yeah, that's literally not, what that's literally yeah. what they looked like. And I was like, that's the angels, which is the full band for him because he doesn't play an instrument. Does no, he? he does vocals apparently. <laughs> um, so then I remember. We get everything set up. We play that. We 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 play the show. Obviously, people are in the crowd, fucking freaking out, wearing Goonies shirts and Lost Boys shirts and whatever. But right, then I thought about going to that show to get shit signed. Oh my god! So then, so the back is where we would load in usually, and the back is like a back patio with an outdoor bar, and it was like it was like kind of nice out, and people would go out to smoke there. Like that was like the smoking area was a back back yard back area bar. He blocked it off entirely. Like, that's the crazy part. <laughs> so so he literally made everyone get out of that area, even though that's part of the bar. Well, because this guy was honestly con- concerned about being assassinated. Yeah, so he made everyone clear out of there before they In played. In case they were Before assassins. they played so that they could do their weird pre-show warm-up. <laughs> literally, even the workers. No one could be back there. <laughs> like, dude, weird as fuck. I-, I was sitting at the merch booth at the back watching... <laughs> Because you weren't really familiar with him as a child actor. No, that's why I was like, okay, this is... Uh, Who the fuck's Corey Feldman? I know that last name because it was the girl I was dating. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Because you had seen The Goonies, but probably not any of his other big Yeah, exactly. I was like, okay, this is a child actor that has a band. Okay, But it was a big (laughs) show for us. So they get on stage. It was fucking terrible. The Angels, I will say, looked a lot better, but you could tell they were wearing pounds and pounds of makeup. They were all produced, yeah. Produced and like... uh, Maybe they had done coke or something in the hour because they their energy level was way different. Which he claims the whole band is completely so. Ah, no way, dude. No <laughs> yeah. way. The angels looked rough. He also claimed they were spies sent to spy. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was rough. But I Poor remember guy. he did a whole Michael Jackson yep um, performance phase where which he wore he, the glove and the in the in the hat because he which, also claims. Michael never touched him. Yeah, and he hung out with Michael a lot, which... So, so did Aaron Carter. So did Macaulay Culkin. Yeah, and they all claim Michael never touched him. Yes, and I, I'm a, I like Michael Jackson. You I kind of... If all of them say that, I kind of trust it. If it also... Yeah, I, I trust that too. Yeah. But he did a whole weird... like. Because I think like he grew up and performed with Michael, maybe, or did... He I don't, lived I, with him. I don't know. He, he, did sta- a, he did a whole... It was He it, stayed at uh, Neverland Ranch. Uh, yeah, but th- why are you doing a Michael Jackson... 
performance and wear and dressing him. like him. Well, it was just weird. It well, was you're a, unable to sing. Like and he him. had like a slideshow PowerPoint in the background, <laughs> like showing old photos. Like, dude, it was so, it was so bad. Oh, I, didn't but, even, I didn't even stay to the end. But I had you, to, as a huge Michael Jackson fan, no, dude, it no, was it, it was even that, touch on that the entire time. <laughs> I'm sitting back at the merch booth with Wes. How'd you sell merch? Was it good? I think we did pretty decent, you know, because yeah. it was a lot of people there. But like, we were <laughs> laughing the entire time. Like, what the fuck is this? I love them. What are we hat? What is happening? Well, because also knowing Wes, who knows all the movies. Oh yeah, he this guy's been knew, in. Yeah. Has been has to be such a mind fucked of like. This is who I've loved I think, all the years. I think we all went into the show with with the mindset of this is going to be terrible, but yeah. this is going to be a good show. Right? Yeah. No, because the people will get what they love no matter what, if it's horrible or not. And it was, dude. That is, I will never. That's one of the worst shows I've ever been to. Just, and that's one of the biggest regrets of shows I didn't go to. <laughs> Really? Yeah. Dude, it was so bad. No, because I love just his movies so love, much. It's just the kid Lost nostalgia. Lost Boys is one of my favorite movies of God, all time. Dude, I've, it was terrible. I've Lost Boys tattooed on me because of how much I love that movie. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. No, my um, th- my calf tattoo. Yeah, maybe we'll do a we'll do a post of your calf tattoo when we talk about this. That's freaking nuts. It's a Chinese box that reads maggots, I believe. Oh, that's from the Lost Boys. Yeah, yep. I've never seen that. So it's I, so fucking good. But I like Chinese food, so maybe I'll like it. And it's a Chinese box that reads maggots. I don't know. If it's I'd, such a good movie. I don't know if I'd like that. You'll love the movie. Uh, it's, it was an eight, 80s film. 1988, I yeah, think. Yeah, so I, you know, I love... 88 or 87. I love older films. Um, maybe 86. But, but either way, in that spectrum. God, it was fucking terrible, dude. I love that. But do you know what's not terrible? It's Moist Monday. <laughs> I love when you can read into my... Well, dude, this has been a longer episode because the intro is forty minutes, so we yeah. felt like we deserved we we felt like we earned you a full episode after the intro. Even though after this, we're going to give you two episodes a week because we're yeah, for start. eleven weeks, dude, eleven <laughs> weeks. Guess how long that is? Three months. Oh my god! Three. That's a crazy one a week is three months of content of Fast and the Furious, and they shit. might put out another movie by oh! then. <laughs> dude, okay, I'm gonna say it right now, we do this series. And then they, if they come out, what are they at, 12? If they release... It would be a 12th movie, I think. If they release Fast and the Furious 12. I think 11. It won't be... Because incro- of Too Fast and Hobbs and Shaw. I think yeah. it'd be at number 11. Oh, because it would be a number I 11. I think they're at 10 now with another. So it would be Fast 11. I think. If they, I'm just going to say, if they release a new Fast and the Furious... No matter what, when they release another we, Fast and the we Furious... We will go see it in theaters... Together. And review notebooks. it... And review it... As soon as possible and put it out like that would as be like an ASAP episode and base. This is spoiler. This yeah. is going to be a spoiler episode, but we're going to talk about this movie because of what it did to the podcast. No, yeah, no matter when it comes Watch out. Watch our podcast blow up because we review the news. <laughs> like, what the f- bunch of garbage. But either way, thank It'll you for- It would be a fun movie to see in theaters. Oh, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Either way, another fun thing to see in theaters would be Moist Monday. And thank you for watching it or listening. Can you imagine it. if we're ever- Moist Monday, the th- the film? The th- no, the theater tour where we perform in theaters. <laughs> Fuck, like not movie voice. theaters, like cool, like yeah, like, like theater. theater theaters. That's the end goal. Like it's I just guess. us, but we take these chairs with us. <laughs> and drink just on. Stage. Just dude, just imagine, but there's just a crowd of people out there. We look, and there's three people, and your girlfriend's on her phone. <laughs> <laughs> like that's gonna. But, be... we, but we're at a theater. Yeah, it's gonna be us with headphones <laughs> Can we on. Please book a shitty theater. <laughs> Can we perform for? A... <laughs> for four people, because the listeners are gonna get the same experience no matter where we go. <laughs> But it's just going to be us and really just, wow. <laughs> what a crowd. <laughs> Four people. And we're going to lie and be like, man, we're a capacity crowd, dude. We sold out. Like, <laughs> And then talking about nothing. Yeah. Just our everything, bullshit. Everything and nothing that's the podcast about. Drinking yeah. a variety of drinks. we're drinking. But right. cheers. Happy Moist cheers, Monday. Brother. Happy Moist Monday, Happy brother. Moist Monday. Keep it moist out there. Love you. But please follow us on... Instagram and TikTok at Moist Monday Podcast. Any comments or questions, email us at moistmondaypodcast at gmail.com. Yeah, moistmondaypodcast at gmail.com. I'd love to hear some feedback. I'd love to hear, like, hey, don't watch the Fast and the Furious movies. No, nope. it's, too, it's late. too late at this point, baby. It's happening. It's too late at this point. Ha- too this moist, point. too happening. <laughs> Isn't that the movie in uh, Schitt's Creek, The Happening, part yep. two or something like no, that? No, The Happening was a, um, fuck, what's his name? 
He has a a burger company now. <laughs> what? Fuck, Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. What's his real name? Mark Wahlberg? Yes, Wahlberger. Yeah, he was in The Happening, where it was where plants make you kill yourself. That's but wasn't Shit's Creek, what's the movie that the she's in? The Crowening. Oh, The Crowening. Like something stupid Crowning like that. part two, because she was in like, yeah. No, okay. The Happening is a That's shitty, a real movie? It's a shitty Mark Wahlberg movie where plants make you kill yourself. Nice. So we're going <laughs> to leave you on that. So go eat some plants and kill yourself. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, keep no. Stay along so you can listen to the next Mo- Moist Monday podcast. Yeah, about Fast and the Furious coming at you every Monday, and probably a Moist Monday Fast and the Furious spinoff coming at you every Tuesday. Yeah, too fast, too moist, too Monday. To your- wait, too moist, too Tuesday. Too moist, too Tuesday, Monday. Tuesdays. Oh, Tuesdays. Too moist, too Tuesdays coming at you. Uh, we will review every moist or every Fast and the Furious movie <laughs> oh my God. on Tuesdays. We'll release it. So um, stay tuned for that. Cheers. Cheers, brother. I love you. <laughs> <laughs>